Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live broadcast, High Resolution Outbreak Tracing and Resistance Detection Using Whole Genome Sequencing in the Case of a Mycobacterium Tuberculosis Outbreak, presented by Winnie Ritterberg. She is a senior scientist microbial genomics at Kyogen Molecular Diagnostics. I am Marjorie Torres of Labroot, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. We are delighted to bring you this educational web seminar presented by Labroots and sponsored by Kyogen Molecular Diagnostics. For more information about our sponsors, please visit www.kyogen.com. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Just click on the green Q&A button located on the lower left of the presentation window and type your question into the box that appears on the screen. She will be following up with your questions via email. Also, please notice that you will be viewing the presentation in the slide window. To enlarge the window, just click on the screen icon located on the lower right. If you have trouble seeing or hearing this presentation, please click on the support button at the top right of the presentation window or use the Q&A button to let us know that you're having a problem. This presentation is educational and thus offers continuing education credits. Please click on the button in the bottom left corner and follow the process to obtain your credits. Please join me in welcoming Winnie Ritterberg. I will now turn the presentation over to her. So welcome everyone to this session. I will present to you how we have used whole genome sequencing for investigating an outbreak of uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis and for detecting antimicrobial resistance using tools of Kyogen Microbial Genomics Pro Suite. So I will start by giving you a brief introduction to mycobacterium tuberculosis before uh, moving on to showing you the case study that we have uh, chosen. And finally, I will present to you the results on uh, our analysis on outbreak tracing and uh, detecting antimicrobial resistance. So uh, tuberculosis is one of the deadliest diseases worldwide. One third of the world's population has been estimated to be infected with mycobacterium tuberculosis. And according to the World Health Organization and the CDC, uh, 10.4 million people became sick with TB and there were 1.8 million TB related deaths uh, in 2015. So there are uh, two types of clinical manifestations of tuberculosis. Uh, pulmonary TB uh, affecting the lungs and extra pulmonary TB affecting uh, other organs. Not everyone infected with TB becomes sick. Uh, TB can remain latent for a lifetime without causing disease, whereas in others, um, especially in people with a, a weakened immune system, uh, TB disease will develop. In either cases, uh, treatment is initiated and antimicrobial resistance is a major concern. So it was estimated that nearly half a million people uh, developed multidrug resistant TB in 2015. Um, so multidrug resistance in TB is defined as resistant to at least uh, isoniazid and rifampicin, and uh, extensive drug resistant in TB is uh, further resistant to a fluoroquinolone and one of the injectable second-line antibiotics, uh, such as uh, amikacin, canamycin, or uh, capriomycin. So, mycobacterium tuberculosis has evolved into seven major lineages uh, that are strongly associated with uh, geographical regions. Uh, strains are highly clonal. There's very little evidence for the transfer and recombination of genes. And consequently, uh, their nucleotide sequences are very similar. Uh, the 16 rRNA sequences uh, do not differ between the members of the mycobacterium tuberculosis complex. Um, as they display very little recombination, 
the main mechanisms of the antimicrobial resistance is uh, not mobile elements with um, a resistance gene, but rather acquisition of uh, mutations affecting uh, the binding pocket and uh, drug target interactions. So TB present a number of challenges uh, and in order to control spreads, uh, in particularly of the uh, multi and with extensive drug resistant TB, surveillance is absolute key. So additionally, uh, knowledge about the resistance mechanisms present in this bacterium is, uh, is really important for correct and effective treatment. The classical methods for investigating pathogen outbreaks include uh, contact investigation, uh, which is uh, based on patient interviews, um, phenotypic methods such as serotonin, and antimicrobial susceptibility testing. Uh, antimicrobial susceptibility testing of uh, mycobacteria can be very challenging and requires uh, good and consistent uh, laboratory practices. So because of the clonal nature of uh, mycobacteria, the accumulation of mutation as the outbreak progresses can be used for epidemiological purposes. So there are several molecular genotyping methods available for mycobacteria uh, that all target small specific parts of the genome. Uh, in the case study that, uh, that I'm going to present to you in a minute, uh, they were using spoligotyping and um, a mycobacterium tuberculosis specific uh, variable number of tandem repeats uh, genotyping. More recent methods uh, include uh, core genome MLST, where almost uh, 3,000 loci in the genome are, uh, are analyzed, and uh, genome wide comparisons of uh, variant positions. So, the advantage of uh, genome comparisons is that uh, SNPs are distributed throughout the genome and there's very low reverse mutation rate. So a whole genome sequence analysis provides by far the greatest resolution in outbreak investigations and may uh, precisely distinguish single isolates, which is especially useful for very complex outbreak situations. So a further advantage of whole genome sequencing is the simultaneous uh, detection of um, antimicrobial resistance mechanisms present in the, in the bacterium. So there is really the potential to capture the entire spectrum of known uh, mutations associated uh, with drug resistance. The primary challenges in using whole genome sequencing for outbreak investigations is uh, sensitive and accurate detection of variants to provide a maximum resolution for transmission analysis and for resistance detection. Uh, linking uh, detected mutations to antimicrobial resistance, which requires access to a comprehensive database. And finally, uh, evaluating novel mutations uh, not listed in publicly available databases. So I know many of you are probably uh, familiar with this, but I will just briefly introduce uh, Chiagen Microbial Genomics Pro Suite. So Chiagen Microbial Genomics Pro Suite builds upon the CNC Genomics Workbench um, and contains the uh, Microbial Genomics module, the MetaGene Mark plugin, and uh, the CNC uh, Genome Finishing module. So our solution is uh, it's the, the all-inclusive holiday version of uh, bioinformatics software for microbial genomics. Um, and uh, it supports analysis in the fields of uh, genomics, transcriptomics, epigenomics, molecular biology, metagenomics, and pathogen typing. So data, metadata, and results can be linked in the uh, workbench. And uh, the solution furthermore uh, contains statistical tools and a range of uh, interactive uh, graphical visualizations of uh, results and uh, metadata. So uh, our solution is fully customizable, uh, which means that we collaborate with external partners 
to provide plugins for Crossmaster ID, uh, Metagenemark, and Blastigo. So the last thing I want to highlight uh, is that our solution is scalable to meet any sample throughput. Uh, it can be run either locally or on the uh, genomic server, uh, which ensures flexibility in, uh, with regards to a number of samples and uh, compute resources. So we know uh, we have a comprehensive toolbox allowing specialized analysis of uh, whole genome sequencing data. And for the new user, some of these tools may appear hidden. And therefore, we would like to um, demonstrate some of these using a very recent case of a mycobacterium tuberculosis outbreak. Earlier this year, uh, Phoebe and co-workers published this study describing the investigation uh, of a molecular cluster of multidrug resistant TB across uh, Austria, Germany, and uh, Romania. So the reason this study caught our attention was that it very well displays the common challenges of tracing an outbreak and evaluating the uh, um, antimicrobial resistance patterns uh, which would really allow us to put our software to the test. So I will now take you through the outline of the outbreak. So in March uh, 2014, the Austrian National Reference Lab um, detected a cluster of five multidrug resistant TB uh, sharing a spoligotype and uh, the NGR patterns. So an investigation was initiated to de determine if transmission had occurred within Austria. Patients uh, 1, 2, and 3 were all diagnosed between 2010 and 12. They originated from the same city in Romania, but had moved to two different cities in Austria. Patients uh, 4 and 5 were diagnosed in June uh, 2013. They were both uh, born in Austria and were living in the same city as patients uh, one and two. Um, they had no prior history of uh, migration or international travel. So the investigation also revealed that patient three had a sister uh, also diagnosed with multidrug resistant TB and she was living in Germany. So this finding prompted the Austrian authorities to contact the National Reference Laboratory in Germany. Uh, in early April uh, 2014, the German National Reference Lab had to take its three isolates of multidrug resistance TB, uh, also with the VNTR genotype A, which was the same type as the Austrian isolates. Uh, all three patients were diagnosed in 2011. Uh, patient 6, uh, which was the, uh, the sister of patient 3, and patient 7, both originated from the same city in Romania. Uh, and patient 8 was a man born, born in West Africa, uh, uh, diagnosed with um, extra, um, extra pulmonary TB with a uh, non-drug resistant strain. So because five patients were now recorded to originate from the same city in Romania, um, the Romanian national uh, TB contact point was informed. So as there had been no systematic uh, genotyping of TB isolates in Romania, uh, all five multidrug resistant TB isolates that were ever detected in that particular region in Romania uh, were sent to Austria for um, analysis. So these five patients were diagnosed between 2004 and uh, 14. Um, isolates from patients 10 and 11 were of the VNTR genotype A. The isolate from patient 9 was of the uh, VNTR genotype B. And the isolate from patient uh, 12 and 13 were of the uh, VNTR genotype C. So all five patients were uh, born and still living in Romania at the time of the investigation. 
here I just want to show you uh, an overview of the 13 patients included in the study. As you can see, uh, five patients uh, live, were living in Austria, three patients were living in Germany, and five patients were living in Romania. You can also see that uh, four patients had a previous diagnosis of uh, TB. Because bacteria evolves throughout the progression of an outbreak, we can perform uh, whole genome uh, comparisons of mutations and obtain information on isolate clustering at very high resolution. So what we have done is detect variants on a genome wide scale and subject these variant positions to phylogenetic analysis. So the results are visualized as a SNP tree displaying the relationship between isolate and the difference in variant positions. Data analysis uh, prior to SNP clustering in include uh, data QC, mapping reads to a reference, and detecting variants. All of these steps are pre-configured in one of our ready-to-use workflows and outputs a list of detected variants uh, for each uh, isolate. So the workflow is pre-configured with default settings to get you started easily, uh, but all parameters can be adjusted and also to, to meet your specific needs and use cases. For this uh, particular analysis, we have chosen to exclude variants that were detected in genes known to be involved in antimicrobial resistance in mycobacterium tuberculosis. Using the published data, our SNP tree is based on 673 variant positions. Here uh, we have chosen a radial representation of the dendrogram, and we are showing three layers of metadata, being the uh, patient ID, which is shown in, um, in red Roman numerals, uh, the country of birth, um, and the country of uh, residence. So as you can see, uh, Austrian isolates are colored blue, German isolates are colored um, red, and uh, Romanian uh, isolates are shown in gray. So because um, data and metadata have been linked, it is very simple to select and display uh, different types of metadata for each sample to make a clear representation of results. So in this next figure, uh, we have overlaid the dendrogram with additional information. So we can now also see uh, the isolation date in gray, uh, the VNTR genotype, uh, which is marked in yellow, and the number of SNPs supporting uh, branches, those are in black. From this uh, SNP tree, we can see that isolates cluster in three groups. So uh, the top cluster contain isolates from patients all originating from the same uh, city in Romania. Um, these were uh, both of uh, VNGR genotype C and originates from uh, patients uh, 12 and 13. So both of these patients uh, were still living in Romania at the time of the investigation. So the second cluster contain isolates from patients that all originate from the same city in Romania, but that, has, um, but that are living in three different countries. So among these patients, transmission likely occurred before migrating. Patients uh, three and six uh, are sisters and likely have a common source of transmission as indicated by their epidemiological link. Their isolates differ by 12 SNPs, however. Um, so Walker and colleagues uh, did a retrospective study of TB outbreak and found that epidemiological linkage was uh, consistent with isolates uh, differing by one to five SNPs, whereas isolates differing by more than 12 SNPs was consistent um, with the absence of an epidemiological link. Our results here uh, therefore indicate that the common source of transmission for the two sisters 
and possibly also um, additional intermediate links uh, were missing from the uh, investigation. The third cluster uh, contains isolates from patients uh, 2, 4, 5 and 10, which are free of the Austrian outbreak isolates. Three isolates uh, from Austria are separated by just one to four SNPs, uh, suggesting two transmissions uh, within Austria, uh, being from uh, patient two to patient four and from patient two to patient five. So from this analysis, uh, it's evident that compared to traditional genotyping, uh, whole genome sequencing provides a much higher resolution uh, in outbreak analysis. Uh, and it may additionally provide information on the sequence of transmission events. So a further advantage of uh, whole genome sequencing for pathogen investigations is the simultaneous detection of antimicrobial resistance mechanisms. So the workbench contains several different variant detection tools. Um, for this study, we use the low frequency variant detection tool that is optimized for uh, finding variants in mixed populations where some variants uh, may occur at a low frequency. Uh, the detected variants were matched against a database of known resistance variants. Um, the resistance database we used contained nearly 1500 different variants distributed in 31 loci and conferring resistance towards uh, 15 anti-TB drugs. The database uh, was based on the public available set of reference variants uh, published by Cole and co-workers in 2015. So the database of Cole uh, includes high confidence variants from TB Dream and Mubi and also uh, variants uh, listed in publications up until uh, 2015. So on top of this, uh, we added additional variants described by Miyato et al., uh, which was published in 2014, and there was published by Alana et al. in uh, 2017. So setting up your own database of resistance variants in the workbench is quite straightforward. Uh, all you need to do is to store your list of uh, variants and any other information you wish to um, display uh, in a comma separated file and import this into the workbench. We found uh, 123 variants uh, causing resistance. 75 of these variants were um, described in the original study, while uh, 48 of them were new. So the table on the right uh, shows the detected variants, uh, the low side they were found in, and their predicted antimicrobial resistance. The column on the far right uh, displays the additional detected variants uh, from our study. The table on the left shows the concordance of detected variants and the antimicrobial susceptibility test result. Uh, overall, we found, uh, like the original authors, um, a, a high congruence between genotypic and phenotypic resistance. Uh, since the phenotypic assays confirm the validity of 30 of the, new, uh, the newly discovered variants, um, we consider these to be true positives. So under this assumption, uh, the optimized variant detection pipeline shown here uh, increases the positive predictive value from 63% in the original study to 90%. To further uh, explore and qualify the additional variants uh, detected, we searched for uh, 3D models of proteins involved in antimicrobial resistance. Our tool uh, that it's called a uh, link variants to 3D protein structure. We'll take a list of variants and search against the protein database for models with sufficient homology. The tool enables visualization of amino acid alterations on 3D models um, as a way of 
evaluating the effect of variance on drug target interactions or protein function. One of the variants that we detected was in the DNA gyrase. So DNA gyrase is involved in supercoiling of DNA uh, where it binds DNA and introduces uh, double-stranded breaks. The DNA gyrase is the target for the uh, fluoroquinolones, uh, which bind the enzyme DNA complex. Mutation of the target region uh, will also the target structure and thereby the uh, binding affinity for the drug. In this figure, uh, we see the DNA gyrase uh, binding DNA and with uh, moxifloxacin linked uh, to the complex. Uh, to the bottom left, we see the reference model with the uh, alanine at position 90, uh, shown in blue. And uh, on the bottom right, there is instead a valine, which is shown in green, at this position in the binding site, uh, which likely will affect the drug binding. So this isolate uh, was indeed resistant as uh, measured by antimicrobial susceptibility testing. Another variant uh, we have taken a closer look at is a uh, serine to asparagine substitution in the binding channel of the RNA polymerase. So RNA polymerase is uh, the target for the levomycin, uh, which will bind inside the DNA RNA channel and thereby physically blocking elongation. Uh, resistance arises from amino acid alterations in the binding site which uh, decreased the affinity for the drug. In this model, uh, we see the RNA polymerase with the uh, rifampicin bound in the active site or the binding channel. Uh, the wild type model is shown on the bottom left in blue and the variant position with the uh, asparagine substitution is shown on the bottom right in, uh, in green. Again, uh, we find that this alteration of the binding channel changes the drug target interaction and the isolate becomes resistant uh, towards uh, rifampicin. So we have found that uh, sensitive variant detection reveals more mutations with likely causal effects and that uh, 3D structures can be used to assess the impact of mutations on drug target interactions. Here, um, I just wanted to show you some additional variants from the case study that we also found uh, 3D models for uh, using, uh, using our tool. Okay, uh, so to sum up, uh, with this study, uh, we have shown how you can use tools in Kyogen Microbial Genomics Pro Suite to uh, for high resolution outbreak tracing and um, by analyzing whole genome sequencing data. Our pre-configured workflows for data QC, uh, mapping and variant detection allow you to get started easily. And um, our optimized variant detector and track tools for database comparison enable uh, user-friendly detection of antimicrobial resistance causing variants. Our tools for 3D visualization can assist you in qualifying previously undescribed variants. So with this, I will finish and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ritterberg, for that informative presentation. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the green Q&A button at the lower left of the presentation window. Type your question into the box that appears on your screen and click on the send button. She will be following up with your questions via email. I would like to once again thank, Dr. thank Winnie Ritterberg for her presentation. I would also like to thank LabRoots and Kyogen Molecular Diagnostics for making today's educational webcast possible. Before we go, I want to let everyone know that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through December 2017. You will receive an email from LabRoots letting you know when this webcast will be available for replay.
Please share that announcement with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. That's all for now. We thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.